is an ever-expanding one. And we find that despite the great confusions and upheavals that have happened in some of the major capitals of the world, despite the negative propaganda, Islam as a way of life continues to affect people throughout the planet. I had the opportunity to travel far into the north uh, to a place called Alaska. And we found in Alaska, in Fairbanks, Alaska, we found Muslims making Juma, and we found Inuit people known as Eskimos who were coming into Islam. It was interesting that when contact was made with the Eskimos, they, when hearing the message of Tawheed, had to say, I mean, what took you so long? And so when you go north into those regions, you'll find that people are still thirsty to hear about the oneness of God and to hear about the finality of the prophethood. Even to the point where information has come to us that far in the north, in what is now known as the North Pole uh, section of Canada, that there are Muslims who have established an Islamic center. You can pray Salatul Jumu'ah in the North Pole, in probably one of the coldest areas in the world, and also in an area where you are living in the land of the midnight sun. And when Muslims went into that region uh, recently, as in the past, they found that there are certain times during the year when the sun never sets. If you go there in, in, the, in the summer, especially in June, you'll find long periods of times, days, where at midnight the sun is out. And so, if it is the month of Ramadan, how do you fast? You will literally be saw him 24 hours um, for almost uh, close to a month. And so, um, when the scholars looked at this, and the fact that in the winter season, it is dark constantly, so you cannot make your salat, then they went back to the, had to the had sayings of the Prophet ﷺ, um, when the Prophet ﷺ was speaking about the time of Dajjal, and, and speaking about the fact that, you know, and during this time when, uh, um, you know, things would be strange, a day would be like a year, a day would be like a month, and they asked, you know, O Messenger of Allah, if we reach a time like this, when everything has, is upside down, how do we make our salat? Then the Prophet ﷺ said, اِقْدَرُوا لَهُ qadra, That you should make taqdeer, that, that, that you should make a, a, a basic equivalent. So therefore what is happening in the northern countries is that they are following um, the closest reasonable city. And so they take the times of Fajr and Dhuhr and Asr and Maghrib and Isha in this near uh, city and they use those times and when the Salat time comes in on their watch, then they make their Salat. If this is not used, then it is also stated by some of the ulama that you can use Mecca al Mukarramah as the center of Islam, use the times in Mecca and then uh, establish your time. What is interesting though, again, is that Muslims have spread far distances and that Islam is vibrant and has solutions for all problems regardless of temperature, regardless of climate or environment. Even if we look at the igloos of the Inuit people, the Eskimo people, um, the, the igloo is already shaped like a masjid and it just needs a minaret. It is also reported uh, recently that Muslims are coming into Islam in New Zealand, that the Maori people, who are known for their rugby players, the All Blacks, and, and known for their, their, their powerful traditions uh, of physical strength and, and their uh, warlike, strong personality, that they are coming into Islam in large numbers and teachers are needed to go down into the area of New Zealand. Reports are also coming now that in Central America, in Mexico, in the southern part of the United States, the southwest, that Spanish-speaking people are entering into Islam. This is a phenomena that is shocking many uh, historians and many people who watch the changes in culture. Because it was the people of Spain, because of the conflict that went on between the Muslims in Al-Andalus and between the conquistadores, the conquerors who came from the north. Because of that negative interaction and because of 
200 years of fighting, um, traditions within Spanish culture actually demonize Muslims. And so it was almost unbelievable uh, when reports started to come about uh, Hispanic people entering into Islam. But it is all part of the legacy of uh, this message that it is uh, set up in such a way that once the veils of ignorance are taken off the eyes of the people, that uh, the individual is able to enjoy Islam and to benefit from the principles of Islam and to maintain the original culture that they came from. So Hispanic people are accepting Islam uh, in the Caribbean region, in Central America, in Mexico, and this is part of the uh, legacy that is coming into the 21st century. In uh, the United States, uh, we find up until now that amongst African American people, we find that Islam is still spreading rapidly. Despite um, the negative confrontations that have gone on in the early, early part of the 21st century, uh, masjids are still functioning and thriving within the United States. Uh, people are still coming to question about Islam. And even after the great upheavals that happened in New York and in London, um, which uh, we recognize are not really part of the legacy of Islam, because of these upheavals on September 11th and also in, on July 7th in London, uh, many people have begun to ask about Islam. So we find um, in the capitals of the United States, um, in Canada, in many of the Western countries, uh, we find people asking about um, the Qur'an and what is Islam and, and, and who are the Muslim people and, and what is the truth about this religion? Why does it spread so far? Why are people still uh, accepting this religion up until now? In all parts of the world, Muslims have been able to enjoy their faith. In all parts of the world, Muslims have been able to reach out to those who were not blessed with an understanding of Islam from their birth. And so, when we look at the gems of wisdom throughout history, when we look at the spread of Islam from the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, up until now, we recognize a great legacy coming out of this faith. We recognize the fact that Tawheed itself, that the oneness of God, unity in the concept of the Creator is a central issue which is a need within every human being. Wherever you are born, however you are raised, everybody recognizes that when the sun rises, that when the sun sets, that when the rain is falling, there is a creator in back of this. Everybody has a need within themselves to recognize a higher power, whether they want to call it nature, or whether they call it dialectical materialism, or whether they call it the force. Whatever they are calling it, they recognize a higher power. When the tornado strikes, when the tsunami strikes, we sit back, we realize there is a force which is above all of us. So Tawheed gives to people a, a form of communication with that force. Tawheed also gives inclusion. So people of different nationalities, of different colors, are able to function together. And so we find that from the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, up until now, that Islam has affected all races, it has affected all continents. It has affected people of different classes, people of different nationalities, and people of different understandings. Through Tawheed, Islam was also able to bring together science, knowledge of all types, mathematics. Muslims were able to benefit from the knowledge of the ancient ones, from the ancient Egyptians, the ancient Phoenicians, the ancient Mesopotamians, the ancient Chinese, the ancient Greeks and Romans. All of the great scholars of the past left a legacy, and Muslims were able to benefit from this legacy because the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Al-Hikmah, Dalat al-Mu'min, 
that wisdom is the lost property of a believer. Anywhere he finds it, he is most deserving of it. And so with this understanding, Muslims were able to bring together spiritual life with material life. Muslims were able to bring together church and state. Muslims were able to bring together different tribes and different nations. We saw in the spread of Islam to Al-Andalus, we saw the peak of civilization. We saw a society that was leading the world in technology, leading the world in philosophy, bringing together races of, from all different parts of the world. And we found out that the great kings and queens and, and uh, leadership in Europe and other parts of the world would send their children to Cordoba, to Toledo, to Seville, to Granada, to Valencia, in order to raise their understanding in this world and to enable them to come up in their lives. We also recognize the fact that within Muslim Spain, within Al Andalus, when Muslims left the message, when they started to become corrupt and they drank wine and they began to involve in adultery and fornication, when the white tried to overcome the black and the black tried to overcome the white, when the Arabs were fighting the non-Arabs, when the non-Arabs fought back against the Arabs, when a Persian was not comfortable with a Turk, when a European was not comfortable with an African, then Muslims lost the light. It was taken away from them, and it went to the hands of another people. We found out, however, that far across the desert, in Timbuktu, that Muslims were able to develop another great civilization. And that despite the fact that they were so remote 